I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into the electrifying world of Edward John's debut novel, Genesis, Harry Travers' series book one. In the story, we follow Captain Harry Travers as he transitions from airline pilot to a high-flying private investigator entangled in a dangerous web of mysteries and dark adversaries. From dogfights to deadly poker games, the series opener packs an adrenaline pumping punch. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Books to Life Marketing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his awesome book. The links are below this interview. Edward, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. You and Harry have a little bit in common. You're both airline pilots, right? Yep. Um, I've been flying for just short of 30 years. So. And uh, when I started to write the series, um, I wanted uh, the character to be an ex-nothing. He's not an ex-policeman. He's not an ex... He has no experience in this field. Mm -hmm. So I had to make him something that was you know, um, away from anything to do with crime. So at first, I kind of didn't want to make him a pilot, but they say you should write about what you know. Yeah. So... Um, I kind of reluctantly at first made him an airline captain. Uh, and then as I started to write the book, um, he ends up getting into all kinds of situations. You know, you know, he, he gets beaten up, he gets shot at, he try, try, people trying to kill him. They try, And it's the adrenaline rush that he gets from trying to solve this crime, this initial crime that he knows has been committed that no one's doing anything about. And that's how he ends up getting into the world of, of private investigation. And it's the adrenaline rush that is the hook because, you know, when he first started flying, he had that adrenaline rush and he kind of, you know, as time goes on, you do, you know, you do kind of lose it. Um, and that's the hook for him. He gets he gets such an adrenaline rush from basically you know the danger if you like that that's what forces him to decide to effectively continue to or try to become this private investigator. But because he doesn't know anything, he's an ex nothing. He has to learn all the skills required to be a private investigator. So in Genesis, he learns how to you know pick a lock, hot wire a car. He learns how to shoot. He, he decides that he needs to improve his self-defense because, you know, he, he meets people who potentially are going to try and kill him if he tries, mm -hmm. because he's, he's investigating these crimes and he's trying to you know, hunt down these heinous people. So he knows that his, his, own, you know, his own welfare, he, to, to protect himself, he decides to learn jujitsu and then he decides to learn a Korean martial art. But that comes, but they become in the, in the further books. So I wanted him to have a natural progression where he learns all the skills that you need to become um, a private investigator. And so I didn't want him to have be suddenly be, you know, a, um, a black belt in jujitsu or be able to, you know, you know, to be a fantastic shot. He has to learn these skills as he goes along. So by the time we get to book five or six, he'll be this, if you like, this cynical private investigator who if you can get the evidence to put the person away, he'll hand it over to the authorities and let them deal with it. But if it gets to a point, which has happened in Genesis and in the other books, that he knows you did it, but he can't prove you did it. Mm. But I can't let you go because if I just turn my back and walk away, you'll go and do it again. So that's when he decides that when that happens, he's got to, he's got to take him out. Yeah. And he just takes them out any way he can um, because, you know, he – so he, he, he he's – eventually Harry Travers will become this kind of vigilante slash private investigator where if he can hand you over to the authorities, he will do it. But if he knows you did it, I can't prove it, but I know you did do it. That's it. You're gone. <laughs> Justice will be served one way. Yeah, or he'll another. do it. He'll do it. Now, let me ask you, were you inspired by any of the great detectives like Philip Marlowe or Sam Spade or any of those guys? Philip Marlowe, because I'm a big Raymond Chandler fan. Mm. I think that he, I think he's probably the greatest of all the crime writers, you know, mm. because he was the first one who, I know there are other great crime writers, 
But um, you know, Chandler was the one with the pole fiction, and you know, and Philip Marlowe. Um, and to a certain extent, I think everyone's trying to be Philip Marlowe. Yeah, yeah every, I agree. Every, everyone wants to be Raymond Chandler. Everyone's trying to be the next Raymond Chandler. And I, I do honestly, I'm not saying I'm going to be the next Raymond Chandler, but I do when I read crime novels. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at some of Chandler's novels; they're only about 120 pages long, right? And yet they're brilliant stories. Farewell, my lovely, the big sleep. You know, you know, they're, um, they're the wonderful line. story. You know, and the, and his use of words, you know, are 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 magical. He was very, you know, very economical with the words. You know, used just the right, you no, know, just the right one. And part of me thinks that you know all crime writers, including myself, just want to be Raymond Chandler. Yeah. So for me, it would be, oh, that's man. a great role model to have. That's for sure, because he is a terrific writer. In fact, I spent the pandemic reading and rereading most of his works because I'm very inspired by him as well. Now, this is a series of books. How many are written? How many are up here? How many do you plan? Have how many well, have been published? Let's go through well, that. Well, Genesis was the first one, hence Genesis, because he starts the journey. He basically he knows a crime's been committed, but no one's doing anything about it. And that's when he says, well, "Okay, well, I'll do something about it." So he doesn't he doesn't go out and say, "Oh, I'm going to go and be a private private investigator." Mm-hmm. He and and then he goes he he begins this journey. And like I said, the hook is the adrenaline, you now the danger that's involved. And then each book, um, the end of each book overlaps into the next one, so you can read either one as a separate story, or you can read the series and they'll all overlap because there's references to previous books, not all the way through, but every now and then. And the uh, the second book is, 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 is Sky High, which I thought was what we were going to talk about today, uh, was Sky High. And the third book is Nemesis of the Damned. In, in Sky High, he hunts a uh, drug dealing pimp. In the third book, he hunts pedophiles and child abusers and child killers. Um, and he kind of, you know, the, the books start off where he he he's like in in Nemesis he's hunting a missing person, mm-hmm. and while he's hunting this missing person, he comes across this other guy who he knows about from a previous crime, and he and then follows him, and that leads him into the next one. And it's the, and it's the same in Genesis. He goes down the road to investigate this crime, and he meets people along the way. Who help him and guide him? As he, he meets a, um, a, a friend called Tommy, who teaches him how to shoot, teaches him how to hotwire mm-hmm. a car, yeah, and and when he's hotwiring the cars, for example, he, he's not fooling himself. The modern cars are different, but you have to learn somewhere. So he goes on to a basic car and learns how to hotwire, how, how to hotwire, how to hotwire it, knowing that obviously modern cars are different, but you've got to know the basics. So again, this learning, this learning process. But um, there's three. Uh, I've got the first six in my head. Uh, I'd like to write at least 10 or 15 of the books as a Wonderful. series. Tell me a little bit about Sky High. Well, well, Sky High is... Um, he there's an, there's an incident at the end of Genesis that affects him quite deeply going into Sky High. And he's recovering from the traumatic experience at the end of Genesis. As he um, and a friend of his comes to him for help, and um, in the process of helping this friend, he ends up having to deal with this particular uh, this particular individual who is ending up basically he's dealing cocaine cut with fentanyl, which is quite a topical at the moment. The, 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 no, the big thing is fentanyl. You know, because because it's you know, it's man made. You don't have to grow it, and and so this particular individual, he's 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 who's called Haffenden, um, turns out to be this drug dealing pimp, which he doesn't know at the time. He finds this out as he goes along, and Haffenden also has, if like, employs the help of these female, if like if you like, glamorous assassins, who he hires to take people out. So they're like female escorts, but the glamorous looking women who basically are as lethal as they come, who, you know, who, who slit your throat in a blink of an eye because that's what they're paid to do. And they come after Travers. They he sends them after him. So he so so he so he 
he's being hunted by these assassins who eventually he deals with, right? And then he goes after, and then he goes after Hathenden. At the same point, as a side story, he is, because he's, you know, he works in the airlines, there's a particular, there's one of the crew members who's working, who works with him, or he knows, who's basically suffering from homophobic attacks, who's been, you know, basically attacked when he comes back home from work. So he ends up helping him. And all the stories come together right at the end. He deals with the drug dealing PM, he deals with a certain individual, he helps this other particular, this, this particular crew member, which leads him on to another story, which 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 overlaps into the beginning of into the beginning of Nemesis. But in Sky High, hence why it's called Sky High, it's basically to do with um this, this particular individual, Haffenden and a guy called Racket, who are who are dealing in drugs and um and you know, they're a, they're a group of assassins who are who, who who they basically hire to take out anyone who they see fit, really. Sounds like so, a big installment in the series for sure. You must have visualized this as a movie or a series of movies, perhaps, uh, since uh, Philip Marlowe is a famous film detective as well. Who would play uh, Harry Travers? Um, I've actually asked myself this question. Oh, do you know what? Um, I I don't know if I have to. Be I honest. could see Liam Neeson if he was about twenty years younger. Uh, do you know what? Spot on. Yeah, absolutely spot on. It because yeah. because Travers is about late thirties, early forties. Right. He's an ex rugby slash football player. If he, if he was American, he'd be the next football player. You know. Right. So you know he's. He's used, he, he, you know, he, he's used to, you know, um, you know, contact sports, you know, he's not afraid to get hurt, that kind of thing. You know, he, he's quite stocky. But um, no, I've, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I've, I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I thought, I don't, but, but I thought, I, I thought a, a series of films are a TV series because um, you could make, say three one hour shows or even four one hour shows of the first book and then make a kind of a mini series of each book rather than just a film mm-hmm. and at the end because each each book has a violent ending they don't they don't end peacefully you know um at the end of book at the end of genesis travis has to deal with someone and he deals with them he just says no that's it i've got i've got to sort you out and off he goes in the end of in the end of Sky High, he has the same thing, and in the end of Nemesis, he but he, he is because he's dealing with you know the damned as he looks at them. He um, he takes particular pleasure in taking out this particular individual. So and so all the books have violent endings, and so yeah, I, I, yeah, probably a you know, three hour film or four or, or or a mini series of each book, four one hour shows. But it's because there's ten or fifteen, ten or fifteen stories. You know, if um, if you get the right people involved, then you know there's p- potentially yeah. Te- no, it's, it's like True Detective. I, mean, I love True Detective. I think they're brilliant. They're brilliantly written, brilliantly made. But it it could be like that, and you could have ten or fifteen of them, yeah. one after the other, all with the same character. Um, and he. he he suffers the way that we all suffer. You now, in Sky High, for example, you know what what happens to him at the end of, of Genesis affects him deeply in, 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 a, in a Sky High. And what I wanted to the message in Sky High, what I wanted was he he's dealing with this traumatic experience which has affected him deeply. At the same time, he has to deal with these individuals, which he said, look, because like, like, he he kind of sees it as a responsibility. I've I know about them now, so now I've got to deal with them, and I can't just let them go because they're going to hurt people, innocent people. And the message I kind of wanted was that you know whatever you're suffering with, and there are, and a lot of people in the world are suffering greatly, you know, um, for you know with whatever is you know just keep going. Yeah. You know, just yeah. you know, I admire people who who. Um, for example, suffer with depression, but this, but at the same point, they keep going through life. They keep going, and I'd say this people just keep going, and that's that's the message probably in the book. Keep going, keep going, you'll get through it. 
Travers gets yeah. to it eventually. And, you know, you know in, in, at the end of Sky and Nemesis, he gets to it. He re really says, look, it comes a time when you just got to keep start living. Yes, it happened to me. Yes, I accept it. But there comes a time when you just got to say, look, life is great. Life is beautiful. You've got to keep living. And, and, and that's probably the message that, that, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and just keep going. Wonderful. Just keep going. Actually, keep on fighting the good fight. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Edward Johns life, has written a series of books. It is called with the novel called Genesis, Harry Travers series, book one. There will be more than a dozen books in this series. Right now, there's about three out there, right, Edward? There is three, yes. Three that are available. And you can follow the adventures of this airline pilot turned private eye in a series of gripping, captivating stories that are much along the lines of the hero that uh, Raymond Chandler wrote about but uniquely original and uniquely this century, for sure. Edward, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Thank you. Great speaking with you as well. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.